everyone, welcome to Levinson Lab. Today's topic is potential energy. So potential energy is the energy that is stored and ready to do work. So in this demonstration lab, we are going to look at some examples and do some calculations that will help understand the three different types of potential energy. We have elastic potential energy, chemical energy, and gravitational potential energy. All right, so let's start with elastic potential energy. There are a lot of examples of elastic potential energy, stretching springs, compressing springs, slingshots, but today we are going to look at the potential energy that is stored in a bow when you pull back the bowstring and how we release that potential energy to do the work of shooting an arrow. Let's watch as FSU professor Geyser shoots an arrow from his English longbow. Now let's look at it again in slow motion. As he works to pull back the bowstring, the energy that he exerts is stored in the bow. The further back he pulls it, the more energy is stored. Simple as that. Bows like this are made very precisely so that when he pulls this bow back 32 inches and releases it, about 75% of potential energy will be transferred to the arrow making the arrow leave the bow at about 110 miles per hour. One fun fact is that potential energy is powerful, so never fire a bow without an arrow. If you do, the potential energy gets transferred to the frame of the bow and can actually damage the bow. The next type of potential energy is chemical energy. One example is using a match, and so energy is stored at the tip of a matchstick in chemicals such as potassium chlorate and sulfur. When I strike the match, the friction causes the release of the chemical energy and produces heat energy and light. Now let's turn to our last type of potential energy, gravitational potential energy. Here you see me working by stepping up the steps of a ladder and lifting a 0.5 kilogram hammer to a height of 1.75 meters. Now there's potential energy in the hammer that is released as it falls to the ground under the force of gravity. We can calculate this type of potential energy using the formula PE equals MGH. But what if instead of stepping up and lifting, I slid the hammer up a ramp, as you can see here. The path is longer and there's friction. How does that affect the potential energy? Don't forget our formula, PE equals MGH. So that formula that's also used here tells us that the PE doesn't change. The path does not matter, only how high it is from the ground. So the potential energy is still 8.5 joules. Fun fact, the ground is relative. If I set up a ladder in my upstairs bedroom, the height is still 1.75 meters because it's relative to the floor of my room, not the earth. And if I set up my ladder in an elevator, the calculations don't change even when the elevator moves. But if you put the hammer in an elevator, it would still go up. Elevator's not worthy. I'm gonna miss these little talks of ours. Yes, Captain America. The elevator does seem to be worthy because it's relative to the floor of the elevator. To sum up, we've learned that energy can be stored and there are three main types, elastic potential energy, chemical energy, and gravitational potential energy. I hope this short video helps everyone understand the different types and this was really fun to make. Bye guys.